The Poke 3 Special doesn't offer anything particularly new. It's the same Poke 3 that Onyx released before. However, when it comes to styling, it is completely refreshed. An all-new contrasting front face with black bezels and a stone gray ledger surrounds the high-quality 6-inch screen. Moving over to the back, you have an arctic white matte textured finished plastic with a book's logo smack dab in the middle. It looks beautiful from all angles, and it doesn't stop there. The accompanying case is fabulous, featuring an all-leather design wrapping around to the back flat silicone panel that grabs the e-reader tightly and safely. The interior is a black and white peppered fleece lining with a book's logo and an elongated rectangular rubber piece of foam with a sticky layer of adhesion to make sure the case doesn't open up. Furthermore, the case is included with the purchase of this unit, and it also acts as a sleep cover. Aside from that, the unit is identical in every way, but if you're still curious, let's bring you up to speed on what the Poke 3 has to offer. The home screen is laid out very nicely and is very easy to understand. Library store, storage app, and settings are down below. And if you tap the top bar, you get your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, your glow light configuration. We'll show you that a little bit later on. All of your little extra add-ons like locations, etc. And you even get the e-ink center, which is new to the most recent firmware update of Onyx products. This allows you to change the dark color enhancement and color filters of the entire device. It is device wide. It is not just on books and PDFs. You also have your refresh modes down here, which we'll show you later as well. You have an ever floating floating ball. It is quite nice and it's very fast even in full quality mode. Anywhere you put it, it's going to conform itself to that side so it's never really going to be in the way. It's actually a very nice addition with having the back and home buttons and stuff like that because this doesn't have any physical buttons on it or even software driven buttons. So you're going to have to go to apps and then floating ball slash navigation ball if you want to remove that and you can just toggle it off and on anytime you want. Store is going to be the Onyx Books store. To be completely honest, a lot of this is just Shakespeare stuff, Project Gutenberg, royalty-free things. You can do full edition downloads just by clicking it right out of the gates. You won't find New York Times bestsellers here, so it's best to maybe install the Amazon app, the Kobo app, the Barnes & Noble app, etc. Storage is where everything is going to automatically organize itself into. For example, when we put in documents, it's automatically going to assume their documents and put them where they need to be. If you put in APK files, they'll show up there. If you put in music files, they'll show up there, etc., etc. Unfortunately, out of the 32 gigs that are on board, you only get 22.5 gigs of actual usable storage. So almost one third of the device's storage is actually just the OS. Applications is where you're going to find all your apps. The pages will just increase to the right the more apps you load on here. And yes, it does have Google Play. You won't have to worry about that. This device is fully able to log in with your Google Play account and download basically anything you want off of Google Play. The latest racing game that runs at 120 hertz might not play as well on this as you might imagine, but basically anything that is a little bit lighter load will function on this unit. Pitting up against the near millions of applications on Google Play, the Onyx Books App Store has 50. Not 50 million, only 50. It is a nice addition to have, and there are some essentials like Viz Reader, Pocketbook Reader, and even Amazon Kindle, but we would recommend going over to Google Play because it's just a little bit more stable and you know you're getting the 100% most up-to-date file. Settings is where you're going to find all of your settings, and it is fairly extensive. You have system display, system bar, languages and input, and languages and input is very useful because just like any other Google device, you can choose from multiple different languages, and your keyboards and everything else can be used with different languages as well. If you want a Japanese keyboard, a Farsi keyboard, go ahead and sign up with that. Because this doesn't have physical buttons, you'll have to rely on gesture support. You have multitask switcher, back home and back by using the swipes from the bottom up. You can even use volume and warm light by toggling on the side gesture toggle.
Before the Onyx Books Leaf came out, this was actually considered to be Onyx's ebook reader. Now it has been promoted or demoted, depending on which way you look at it, to a small but powerful multimedia tablet with a six inch screen. It is a very small screen, but reading is fantastic. Both the Neo Reader and anything else you put on here, Moon Plus Reader, etc., is all going to be very fast and quick because the core mechanics of this unit itself is so inherently fast that it will handle anything you throw at it. It is going to come down to what reader app you have, which is going to depend on all of the settings and everything. So if you download something that maybe is only written in Arabic, all your menu elements are going to be in Arabic. So you have to make sure you have the right reader app for the right application, but the screen, the package, the margins, the contrast, everything is just looking so beautiful on this. You'll have no problem with any book. Little word of wisdom, don't buy this for PDFs. Can it run PDFs? Absolutely it can. But you wouldn't want to grab this for the sole purposes of having a PDF reader. Reason being, it's very, very small. It's the length of some fingers, actually. This is a really small screen that can run PDFs very, very well but it's not recommended. You can pinch and zoom and you get a little mini map and you can long press on things. So there's a lot to play with and a lot to do in terms of a functionality standpoint, but it's not practical. There's no note taking layer and everything's just very hard to read. Even manga is a little bit on the small side. Now, typically you don't have to pinch and zoom on manga and graphic novels but this one you kind of do. It's really small. Manga starts at around the seven inch size for screen sizes or actual manga when you buy them in stores and comic books themselves, North American comic books are gigantic. So this is going to be a little bit of a culture shock when it comes to having to conform your eyes and just what you're used to when you're reading on such a small screen. But it is very powerful. You're gonna have absolutely no hangups whatsoever and you can download anything you want comicsology, etc, etc, and just simply sideload them in, turn them on, and away you go. The glow light looks wonderful, and usually on e-readers, when you mix both to full intensity, it ends up being a little bit blue, and this one is very stone white. You can, of course, back everything off and have it extremely blue, or you can make everything super orange like candlelight, or any combination of whatever which way in between. It is a very nice way to mix and match everything, and you do have toggles each respectively for a one on one, and you can link them together so that when you move them, they go up and down together like that, therefore you never actually change the color but only the intensity itself. Very much along the lines of what many manufacturers do, like Pocketbook, special editions are a very welcomed refresh that keeps the device live and well in this ever-changing industry. On the inside, this unit might not be worlds different than the regular edition it's based off of, but on the outside, it certainly does shine. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.